Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a very subtle point regarding the corner points. Please note that in all the formulations that we have done till now, we have considered a plate uh, which was uh, which was shaped like this. So we have drawn this shape earlier. Uh, it was something like this, and we had considered uh, our our x-axis in this fashion. Or y axis in this fashion, and of course the z here. Together with this, we had also considered the presence of the S n coordinate system where the n was uh, pointed perpendicular to the periphery at any point and S was along the periphery. Now, uh, even though we did not mention it explicitly, we had all, always considered this periphery to be smooth in nature. So all the formulations that we have done till now, they did not consider the presence of any sharp corner on this. Now why is that important? That is important because in many of the engineering applications, we do use plates which are square shaped or rectangular shaped or even triangular shaped. So uh, as soon as we have a uh, the presence of a vertex, a corner point, then the issue that we are going to consider, that we are going to talk about here, that arises. So uh, let me point out exactly what the issue is and then I'll talk about how to overcome it. All right. So uh, the issue uh, will be clear if we just go back to a previous slide where we had obtained the final version um, of, our, uh, of our statement which led to the governing equation and the boundary condition. It was in this slide number 18 or page number 18. You see uh, these were the various terms we had obtained and from here we had obtained these governing differential equations and boundary conditions over here at the bottom of this page. So I want you to focus your attention on this particular line at the top of this page. In particular, very specifically you note this particular expression. You see what we had done here? We had taken this term out from here and we had uh, we had used something like uh, the integration by parts. Okay, over here. Now, uh, this is where the difficulty lies the moment you have something of a corner point in your periphery. Please note what the problem is specifically. You see, we have this, this expression where you have the presence of a derivative with respect to S. This S is tracking the periphery. Please also note that within this M and S expression, you would ha have uh, derivatives of W with respect to S and N. So both within this M and S as well as within this term, you have the presence of derivatives with respect to s and it is exactly that the presence of those derivatives which is actually creating the problem to see uh, even more explicitly what the problem is let me get back to our page here and let me take your attention back to something which we have studied uh, in our uh, senior secondary classes that is plus two uh, so let me go to the rough column here and point out what the issue is. You see, suppose we have a function in this fashion. Suppose this is f1 and let us say over a certain domain of x, this f1 is defined and it is varying in this kind of a smooth fashion. Simultaneously, you consider another function where again, the independent variable is x and this function f2 it is in this fashion okay so we have the presence of a sharp point at a certain value of x now you see over the domains on which this f1 and f2 are defined they are both continuous so there is no problem with the continuity however if you consider any point within this domain, 
you can easily see uh, that those are all differentiable however if you consider this particular point if you consider this particular point this point uh, maybe it is some uh, xk so corresponding to that uh, point the value of the function f2 or, or the function in the neighborhood of that point xk is such that it is continuous definitely but it is not differentiable at xk courtesy the presence of this sharp point so if you consider the the deflection variable w to be like this function f2 then we can immediately see that the presence of a sharp point on the periphery does indeed create a problem so let us see uh, uh, i mean how exactly we deal with that situation so for that uh, let me let me uh, draw uh, let me draw an a rectangular so instead of drawing anything arbitrary let me draw a rectangular plate like this where this again is our x axis this is our y axis and down below is our z axis now as before uh, we have our n axis like this and our s axis present like this however so this is along this edge all right so let me let me uh, let me number this uh, edge, uh, vertices so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 now on the edge 1 2 we have the orientation of the n and the s axis in this particular fashion so n is parallel to x and s is parallel to y and they are both aligned with the positive directions of x so the positive direction of n coincides with the positive direction of x the positive direction of s corresponds with the positive direction of y no problem however you come now to the edge 2 3 what happens now you see we do have to maintain the orientation of the s as we track the periphery so when you come so you when you move along the periphery from 1 to 2 the s is directed from 1 to 2 and when you reach this edge 2 3 you have to keep your s axis pointed in such a fashion that it goes from 2 to 3 so this is the correct direction now you see what has happened previously n was parallel to x now this is our n and it has now become parallel to y not only that it has also now uh, it is also now oriented uh, along the positive direction of y itself however the s this is our s now on the edge 2 3 this s axis is parallel to x but it is along the negative direction of x okay so uh, it may seem to us that compared to this arbitrary profile we do have a certain simplicity when we have these kinds of nice parallel edges present in the rectangular plate or the square plate and that is true it does give us uh, a lot of simplicity in terms of solving the problem uh, that symmetry but at the same time it also calls for uh, a little bit of more carefulness in how we deal with this s and n uh, coordinate systems okay and by by isolating or by or by focusing our attention on that particular term which i had mentioned earlier uh, we'll see how we deal with that okay so we had this term mns del delta w del s ds this was over the entire periphery but although we have written it like this we have to understand that this entire integration written in this fashion for the rectangular plate is not quite correct because when you write like that when you write this entire integration 
over the entire periphery okay understanding that you uh, that this s tracks the entire periphery uh, it is not quite right to right to write like that because at the points 1 2 3 and 4 this sort of a derivative the del del s term that would not even be defined so what actually should be written instead of this is a piecewise integration so what we do is we subdivide this integration from point p1 to point p2 okay so you can think of these things as p1 p2 p3 and p4 p4 point and we go from p1 to p2 now to keep things really really explicit what we'll do is uh, we will further distinguish between the same point as it is a part of a particular edge and as it is a particular of another edge for instance what i mean to say here is that you consider the point p2 this point p2 is very much a part of this edge p1 p2 it is also a part of the edge p2 p3 so when i write like this p2 which one do i mean i actually mean the the point or or as we move uh, or as we tend to the point p2 moving along this one two edge and that i denote by this p2 minus so i am not exactly sitting at the point p2 rather i am sitting at a point which is arbitrarily close to the point p2 but moving from the uh, from the point p1 towards p2 here of course it is the other way around it is p1 plus meaning that we are starting not exactly from the point p1 but at a point which is uh, slightly beyond the point p1 as part of the edge p1 p2 so uh, uh, and of course this integration term whatever is present here that is going to be present so i'm not going to repeat it uh, over and over again so this entire integration is going to be like this for the edge p2 p3 it will be p2 plus uh, the limits will be from p2 plus to p3 minus the same integrand over ds then for the edge p3 p4 we have the limits p3 plus to p4 minus and you get the idea we just need to use another integration which goes from p4 plus to this time p1 minus and now you see this entire all these four integrations they uh, cover the whole uh, the whole periphery except except really the points that uh, that we were worried about okay so we have cleverly avoided talking about the points where the where the differentiability was actually an issue so what do we do from here well now that we have written these things um, over domains that uh, that do allow uh, these kinds of differentiations without any problem what we can do is we can actually uh, carry out our integration by parts okay so what we are going to do is let's go to the next page and uh, and carry out this uh, carry out these operations okay so so what we'll have here is uh, uh, you understand that this uh, this thing is equivalent to m n s del delta w del s okay so now this can be written as m n s one integration over the second bit that will give us delta w now the integration limits will be utilized p1 plus to p2 minus minus integration del mns del s we do the differentiation over this first bit 
and then the integration of course over the second bit everything within this integration so whatever we have done for this first term will be repeated for all these for all the other terms okay so let me just write one more and then i'll just use dot dot uh actually let let me write write down everything uh, you'll see in a while why that is necessary at least for this step So this will be p3 plus to p4 minus minus integration del mns del s delta w ds p3 plus to p4 minus and finally i will have mns delta w p4 plus to p1 minus minus p4 plus p1 minus del mns del s delta w yes all right now comes the little trick which will actually help us you see this one m n s delta w these limits uh, when we actually write them uh, down explicitly it will be like m n s delta w evaluated at p2 minus minus m n s delta w evaluated at p1 plus all right here it will be m n s delta w evaluated at p3 minus minus of m n s delta w evaluated at p2 plus and so on and so forth for the other two square bracket terms now is it not possible for me to to consider those terms only and then to rewrite them in this particular fashion because they are only involving the minus and the plus what i will do is i will take the minus evaluated at this p1 plus together with the plus mns delta w p1 evaluated at p1 minus and i will consider them together so i'll take this p1 plus from here and the p1 minus from this last term similarly i will take this p2 plus term and then I'll take this uh, uh, this p2 minus term this is simple basic algebra it's just that I'm writing this in the form of the square brackets which makes this perhaps look a little bit um, alien to us but it is just basic plus and minus algebra And the rest of it are just those integration terms okay we don't fiddle around with those integration terms we keep their limits as as they are we don't play any tricks on them okay so uh, so we just have i'm writing this in a very rough fashion i hope you don't mind okay so these terms are exactly the same as they were there in the previous step all right now that we have this uh, this particular form what we can do is we can focus our attention on any one of these terms if we can deal with one of these we can deal with the rest in exactly the same fashion and in order to do that uh, let me go to the next page and do it in a very nice explicit manner So I'll draw the. Uh, let me let me uh, let me bring back this diagram. Okay.
and what I'm going to consider is the corner C2. So what happens there? So first of all, you note this. The face with edge or face along the edge 1, 2. So when I say the face with edge 1, 2, what I basically mean is that I want you to, uh, to focus your attention on along uh, on this particular face. So you understand that this plate indeed has a thickness. Of course, for the for the sake of clarity, I have uh, have uh, humongously exaggerated the thickness here, but it is only for the sake of clarity. I hope you don't mind. Uh, but this is really the this 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 particular thing that edge is what I'm going to focus on with the edge one two. Okay. So here. What do we have? We have mxy is equal to mns. And why is that? It is because x corresponds directly to n and y corresponds directly to s. There is absolutely no confusion. All right. So let me put that in yellow color. Next. For the face with edge 2, 3, what we have is actually myx. You see, over this face, the if you consider the or you refer to the xy coordinate system, then you have this kind of the y system and the x system. This is myx, but this is where uh, the whole understanding comes together. This MYX is not equal to MNS. Rather, it is equal to minus MNS. All right. This Y certainly corresponds to N, but the X is opposite to S. And that is where it makes all the difference. Okay. So, uh, what is the implication of this? Well, the implication is, if you consider this particular term mns delta w from p2 plus to p2 minus then this is going to give us uh, mns delta w evaluated at p2 minus so you understand that this p2 minus is along the edge 1, 2. This is P2 plus. And this P2 plus is a part of the edge 2, 3. Now, as we have written here, when it is part of the edge 1, 2, which is this, this MNS is corresponds to, it corresponds to MXY. All right, we have this minus and then this MNS evaluated at P2 plus, which means that we are actually sitting now on the edge 2, 3, then it becomes minus of MYX. All right. Now, you understand that we are talking about arbitrarily close limits to this point P2. Sitting over here on the edge 1, 2, sitting over here on the edge 2, 3. So these points are arbitrarily close to the point P2. Now, we also know that MXY must be equal to MYX. So overall, what this is going to give us is MXY twice of that delta W evaluated at the point P2. That, it is, that is what it is giving us. Okay. Now, this basically uh, uh, 
brings us to the conclusion of whatever we had to do uh, regarding this. But you see the implication of this. Okay, I mean the algebra is quite simple, but the implication of this you note. Back when we were doing or back when we were dealing with the formulation associated with the smooth periphery, we did not have any extra term arising out of this integration by parts because you please go back let us go back to that page that I had shown earlier here you note that as a result of the integration by parts the square bracket term it was we could deal with it by starting from one point and coming back to the same point and then as a result of that operation this was simply giving us zero so these square bracket the square bracket it was just con no, contributing nothing this entire term was just contributing this integration term however now if I if I come back to my page you will see that the square bracket term considering just the point p2 is actually contributing something non-zero and if I go back up to the previous page you note that I have only considered this particular point if I considered the the point p1 I will have another term which is which will be contributing like a twice mxy delta w if I consider this term it will be again contributing a twice mxy delta w and then this term at p4 will be also contributing a twice mxy delta w so together all of these things they are going to contribute non-zero things in addition to all these terms involving the integration so does this so what what does this physically imply really okay well uh, when we do problems involving these kinds of rectangular plates uh, we will see okay and uh, i will provide uh, a link to the uh, to the github file where this is actually explicitly discussed uh, considering a rectangular plate uh, under uh, sinusoidal loading you will see that because of the presence of these non-zero contributions uh, there is a very subtle difference between the integrated form of the load which is applied and the integrated form of the of the shear that we are obtaining uh, considering just the boundaries and that discrepancy arises because of the presence or the contributions from these corner points now if I'm uh, when I say like this it certainly doesn't make any sense I understand that that is why I'm saying uh, uh, that when you do that problem associated with the rectangular plate under sinusoidal loading uh, simply supported boundary conditions so I mean it's a very straightforward thing it's, it's a bit long to do so which which is why I have I have implemented that solution using Jupyter Notebook, uh, but the point uh, that I really want you uh, that I really wanted to highlight through that problem uh, was the discrepancy between the value of the total shear along the edge and the value of the total load. So it's something like this. So let me be very brief about it. That when you consider a plate like this, and you you apply some kind of loading over here. What you expect is that this entire loading must be supported by the sum of the forces which are being generated over these four edges. That is, of course, something which you would expect even if you did not know anything about advanced mechanics of solids. But that is where the discrepancy lies. That kind of an expectation is not quite met because there is a non-zero contribution from the corner points. Okay. So, uh, so when you do that problem you'll see that um, that the difference explicitly and you'll also see very clearly and very satisfyingly that when you consider the contribution from these corner points that discrepancy gets matched perfectly all right so on that note i will end this video thank you very much